My name is Sequoia, but my friends call me Woody, so it's my hope that by today's end we'll all at least have one more friend. Even if it's just me, who's going to put this down. I'd like to talk to you about the reason we're all here. We either are, are or know someone living with chronic pain. It's my personal opinion that more than half the people in the world, there's more people living in pain than there are living pain free. That can be startling, it can be overwhelming, it can be just downright frightening to know that if you're living in pain and there's more people living in pain, then what's, how can I ever expect to have any different for myself? The fact that I'm standing here today is proof that you can have very different. I'm just going to move this chair just because it's in the way. I don't want to leave. Is that better? Mm -hmm. Okay, I want you to see me. See that I'm here? We can see you okay. just fine. <laughs> so, the fact that I'm here is proof that we can all have very different outcomes from the situations that we started at. My journey is my journey, and everyone's story is a little bit different, but where we meet is where we all find our hope. And our hope today is that we can certainly find the encouragement and the support to come out of the situations that we're in as far as our pain goes. So, I want to share with you my journey. About 10 years ago, I bumped my elbow on a countertop. From there I went to, I just wrapped up my 10th surgery. My entire 20s was robbed from me. I went from being a promising athlete and artist in many different ways. I sang, I danced professionally, I trained, I choreography. I was in line for my international dance certification with one of the top dance schools in the world. I bumped my, my elbow on a countertop. You can't dance like that. In and out of surgery, constantly having to teach yourself to rewrite, so on and so forth. Those are things that will cause you to lose hope. Yet, here I am. So, going from one extreme to the other and in between is where I want to talk to you about. In between is where we tend to lose hope. Where we feel like there's no, there's, there's nothing that is going to make it any better. How can this pain that seems to have altered my entire being, my entire world, my entire life as I knew it to be, how can I overcome that? There's one little word, a four-letter word, not a grown-up four-letter word, but one simple four-letter word that made the difference. Does anybody know what that four-letter word is? Anybody? Hope. Hope. H-O-P-E. Having optimism, persevering every day, hope, Har harnessing our positivity endlessly. If you give up on yourself, you will give up on the potential. You will give up on your outcome. You will give up on your dreams. You will give up on being able to overcome pain. You can't fight pain with pain. You have to fight pain with hope. I personally found my hope right here at Rutgers. I've been to countless doctors around the country. I have had surgery in more places than I care to name for all sorts of kinds of things, primarily for my arm, and nobody did it like they did it here. I came and I was treated like family from the moment I walked in. My rep for Medtronics, Sheldon, absolutely phenomenal. A brother that I consider him now for how he, he made sure that I was taken care of. Every person that has touched my life here at Rutgers in Newark is absolutely part of encouraging my hope. So from them I've learned that it's vital to surround yourself with positive people. The fighters that you fight with have to be fighting for a common cause, not fighting against good, fighting for good with you. And if you can surround yourself with that same positivity, that same force, you are you can overcome pain. You can overcome it before you even come out of it. You live with it. You don't live in it. It lives within you. You're its host. So quite naturally, if you're its host, you can serve an eviction whenever you feel ready to. You just have to get that power, and the power does come from your mind. It also comes from you taking care of your body, because our bodies are our temples. Our bodies will sustain us. Our bodies work around the clock, and we generally don't give our bodies what it needs so that it can perform at the rate it was designed to function. What's your favorite car? If you had all the money in the world, what car would you buy? A Bentley, Aston Martin, yeah, something like that. What about you, Ernest? Ferrari. A Ferrari. 
Okay, let me ask you a question. Would you walk into your favorite fast food establishment, skim out the fryer, and pour that oil from their fryer into your gas tank or your Ferrari or your Bentley? You can't expect a high-performance vehicle to run like that, right? That's what our bodies are. We can't expect our bodies to fight the good fight the way it's designed to if we're pouring junk into it, if we're not treating it in the manner that it was designed. You treat your body right, your body will treat you right, and in turn, it will give you the energy, it will give you the strength, it will give you the endurance to, to fight against whatever's going on in your body, whether it be pain, sickness, illness, everything. You'll even live in pain. Here's, here's the great part about it. This is how great our bodies are. Are you ready? Which you all know. You live in pain. It drains you. You don't have the energy to get up. You don't have the energy to get dressed. You don't want to do anything. You don't want to socialize. You start eating better. You start taking care of yourself, getting proper rest, feeding that, feeding that machine, that high performance machine, just like you would take it into a shop. You'll notice it starts to perform better. You'll start to rev your engine a little bit. You'll notice that you're going further, you're getting better gas mileage. That's what our bodies do. Your body is essential in you overcoming with victory pain. I know it worked for me. I went from 10 years of depression, uh, codependency on all my prescription medication because I couldn't balance the pain and the hopelessness, that of depression, overweight, morbidly obese, and within, I'd say within eight months alone, I lost 115 pounds just because I changed what I ate. I had the motivation, I had the energy, and due to my machine, I now had the, the strength, the internal strength to really overcome. This is all natural. I don't go to the gym, I don't take any supplements. All I did was feed my body, was feed my high performance machine. That was all I did. And where it came from is me knowing that in order for this to get better, this had to get better. And this has to get better when all the rest of this get better. It all goes together, mind, body, and soul. So you have your mind telling you that you want to give up, but you can't. You have to be strong. You have to outsmart your obstacles. That's the brilliant thing about our bodies. That's the brilliant thing about our situations. Everything's a situation. This table being here right now is a situation. How can I outsmart it? I'm not going to get up on it and walk on it. I'm going to walk around it or I'm just gonna get strong enough to move it. That's what we have to learn to do with our bodies. Whatever the situation is, whether it be pain or it be circumstance, we can overcome it. You have to outsmart it. If you know there's traffic on your way into work, don't take that route. Find another route. And if you have to take that route, leave earlier. And if you do get stuck in traffic, be thankful that you're stuck in traffic instead of being stuck in your house, missing a full day at work. If you get there a little bit late, they'll understand if you don't show up at all, you'll never get anywhere, right? You won't get the game. And that's what giving up on yourself is. Giving up, you'll never get the game. If you give up, you'll never get anywhere. There's no success in, in defeat. And there's no success in quitting. So I want to actually ask you guys some questions and see where you are with your situations. Well, they give me hypothetical because I need to know how So what kind of pain would you say that you're living with, or do you know someone living in pain? Right now, currently, I have some neck pain that's not going away for the past two days. What are, and how are you helping your neck pain? Massage. Okay. Neck therapy. So you're attacking that. You're taking your power back. You're mm -hmm. telling your neck pain that you're not going to defeat it. Ignoring it. it. Exactly. <laughs> well, ignoring it's so not going to make it better, but you are working to make it better because mm -hmm. you're being active. That's awesome. That she's not giving up hope. A lot of people will say, oh, I have neck pain. And they walk around like this for two weeks. I applaud you. Thank you. You're welcome. Stronger than you thought you were. Look at that. What about you? What kind of pain? Do you know anybody living in pain? Yes, absolutely. How does that affect their lives? Um, it's disabling. It is. Yes. Now, do you find that because they have disabling pain that it's disabled you and how you function with them socially? Oh, absolutely. Because it's hard to connect with them, right? Yeah. You don't ever really know what to say or what to do because you don't want to get them out and want to do something and then they're just not enjoying themselves or you feel like you're uh, causing them more pain because they're so uncomfortable. That's what it is. Chronic pain, it's a big beast, but we can slay that giant. Do you know that by you even offering your kindness to whoever you know living with pain gives them strength every day? 100%, it really does. Because when you're defeated, and you feel like you're a prisoner within your own body. 
in a wrong, you're wrongly accused serving a life sentence in pain. You're trapped in your own body. Your body becomes your prison. And someone reaches out to you from the outside and says, hey, I hope you're having a great day. You want to do something? How are you? That makes you feel like, wow, somebody on the outside cares about me. That's in you ask any prisoner. That's why they have prison pen pals, right? You can write, you can get on the internet, so on and so forth. They need that. We need that. So that's excellent for you. What about you? You know anybody living in pain? Yes, I do. Well, how does that affect their life? It affects everybody around them. Yeah. But just by going and touching the hand and saying, it's okay, I'm here for you, it makes them all work. Absolutely, a healing touch. And understanding compassion goes so far. Yeah. What about you? Do you know anybody living oh, yeah. in pain? And the same thing, just showing the compassion, showing that, you know, get them motivated, let them know, like, okay, don't sit in the house and, you know, stay in there all day. Exactly. Get out, move around, do physical therapy, do all the things. Like, it'll help you. Yeah, it hurts. Yeah. But you'll benefit from it. You want to know something else that I learned? It's a great form of therapy, friendship. I have, um, I've had some girlfriends, and this is where really it made my life feel like I had a, I could see the light in all this darkness. I could see the light. I have girlfriends that knew that it was hard for me to go out and, you know, do things without winding up in pain and having to leave or just altering my whole mood. So they would come over and do my nails. I love having my nails done. <laughs> come over and we have girls that help that. Yeah. It is an outlet. Mm -hmm. And you know what it does? It's a distraction. Right. I was just about to say it's a, It separates you from what's going on with you and it gives you kind of a, a better perspective to say, you know what, if while well, all this is going on, I can have this peace, this joy, this happiness. Maybe I can cling to that more than I can cling to this. Right. And it gives you something to look forward to. So that's awesome. You, all of you have, obviously, every day you touch lives that from people that live in chronic pain. And I say live with, not live in, because we are pain's host. We can live with it. We'll keep it there as long as we want to keep it there. Some of us choose to keep it there longer than others. I chose 10 years to keep mine there. You want to know why? Anybody know why? Why would a healthy, young, vibrant person choose to stay in pain for two years, 10 years, give up their entire 20s, forfeit all these amazing opportunities? Anybody know? Yes? No hope. Who said that? No hope. Exactly. I gave up hope. I 100%, I went to a doctor between my ninth and 10th surgery and asked them if they would amputate my arm. I kid you not. I walked in there and I said to myself, it would be better for me to cut it off at, the, at my um, shoulder than it would be for me to live with the pain. You know what that doctor said to me? Why did you give up on yourself? And I didn't think about it until, you know, after I left, because quite naturally I went there for him to cut it off. Just walk in there, you're just going to cut it off, send me home, bandage me up, it's fine. I can live with one arm, but I can't live with having one arm that constantly causes me such pain and grief. I was, I was wrong. I can, and I can overcome it. I outsmarted my obstacles. I started doing my research. And then I found out about Medtronics, just uh, on a whim. Met somebody who was just kind enough to say to me, hey, have you tried neurostimulation? Just in the most random of places. You know, we women, we always talk to people. Mm -hmm. We'll be in the bathroom and we'll find out like where you can shop and say where you can get the best life insurance, you know, who you're gonna get the best this from and that from. That's what we do, right? Sure enough, that's what happened. Someone said neurostimulation to me, and I got online, and I started doing research, and I found out about Med Medtronics. I contacted Medtronic rep. Rather, they contacted me. I don't know how they got my name, but they, this always seems to happen. They contacted me. Next thing you know, I am signed up for my trial. The trial worked amazingly. I look like Frankenstein, you know, with stuff taped to me, and I'm walking around like this because they tell you you can't bend or twist or anything like that. And I cried. I cried. I cried because the first time in 10 years I could actually sleep through a night. I cried because I could eat without feeling like something was just attacking me. Pain. I was pain free for the first time. I promise that's not me. <laughs> I was pain free for the first time in 10 years because of a machine that was taped to me that I never even thought I would ever experience. I didn't even know that kind of technology was out there. But that was just the beginning. So I go into my doctor for them to remove my trial, and quite naturally, I cry again. And now I'm really crying because I don't want to let it go. I became dependent. I went from being dependent on my, my prescription drugs to being dependent on the machine thinking, 
it's the machine and it's the pills, it's the situation that's going to make it better for me. That's when my journey started and when I realized that it all started here. Anything can happen to you. Life is inevitably going to happen. We're born, we live, and then we die, right? Everything that happens while we're here, or as I like to refer to as the dash between your birthday that you is on your tombstone and your, the day you die, that dash, everything that happens there is inevitable. It's going to happen. How we handle it is what makes the difference. So I had my trial. I cried, and they knew that I, was, I needed this machine. They got me in touch with the Medtronics guys. Sure enough, I was all signed up for surgery. Had to come all the way from the West Coast back to the East Coast, where I'm born and raised, to have my surgery right here. I met Dr. Mammoth. Dr. Mammoth was in meeting him. I just felt safe. And it's very important for doctors to make you feel safe, like you matter, like they're really going to do anything and everything to make sure that you have the best results. When they care about you as a person, then it reflects when you're their patient. A hundred percent. That's another thing that helps motivate. You know, you can't take somebody um, that's living in chronic pain or living in some kind of unfortunate life-altering situation and treat them like they don't matter. Talk at them. Treat them like they're just a number. Not look at them, not engage them, not be personal to them. We can't do that. We can't do it with people on the street. All the crime that we see, do you know why that's like that? Crime and just lack of consideration for another human being, you know where that comes from? The world as a whole, societally, we've given up hope. We have no hope that our neighbor's gonna treat us with any kind of kindness. We have no hope that our neighbor's gonna treat us with any kind of respect or dignity. We have no hope that we're gonna matter as and have value to another human being. So we tend to treat each other. Hey, don't come over here. Hey, don't talk to me. Hey, are you looking at me? Hey, I'm stuck in traffic right now. I'm so angry. That's what it does. Just like patients who live with chronic pain tend to be angry, hostile, depressed, all these things, very emotional. Society does the same thing. It's a vicious cycle of hopelessness. Anyway, Dr. Mammoth, being the genius that he is, he was the only doctor that didn't want to cut me up like I was some kind of science project. I kid you not. I've had doctors offer to cut me from hip to ankle, to take a vein out of my leg, and cut me from fingertip to armpit, to wrap that vein that they take out of my leg to wrap around the nerve in my arm. That's a little drastic, huh? Sounds like somebody just wants to get their name in a medical book. Sounds like somebody thinks that I don't matter enough as a person to consider, to think about putting me through all that pain altering my life even further when they can do something in a less invasive way that's going to benefit me. That's the difference in care. Dr. Mammoth said that he could do something and that he could do it with minimal scarring and he did just what he said he could do. He was confident in his ability. He had hope in himself and had hope in me not giving up on myself that he could give me the best results and here I am today as living proof that he absolutely did that. I was just telling you earlier how I woke up on September 26, 2013. That's my surgery day. I call it my rebirth day. I woke up from that, that surgery, my 10th surgery, walking. I'm laying in the recovery unit, and they actually dismissed me within 15 minutes. They told me I had way too much energy and that I was causing an uproar with the other patients. They wanted to know what I was taking. I just came out of surgery. I've never come out of surgery walking around, ever. Not for 10 of them, and that doesn't even include all the dental work that I've had done. Never, 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 never. Here I did. Because from the moment I came in, someone treated me like I mattered. I went in with that encouragement, with that positivity, and I took that. When I took my breath and they put the mask, told me to count backwards, they said, put yourself in your happy place. And you know what I said? I'm already there. Right here. Changing lives every day. That was my little miracle. I went in with that positive energy, I woke up with it, and the difference it makes in your healing, the difference it makes in your body, how it responds, is 100% a fact. It does, it makes a huge difference. Now if you wanna poison yourself with your negative thoughts constantly, you will 100% defeat yourself in healing. Your body can't work against itself. That chemicals, the chemical reaction that happens in your brain with negative, negative thinking, negative response, you release all of that into your body. Stress is a killer, right? You see it every day. Where do you think stress comes from? Negativity. That's all it is. <clears throat> so, here I am, 
living proof that a machine that not very many people have, although Jerry Lewis was the first to have it. That's what I was told. That's a very cool fact. Jerry Lewis huh, has the same machine as me. We can go rub elbows. Maybe meet at a convention and say, hey, look, I got the same scar as you. Let's talk about your machine. How do you love your machine? I love my machine. I walk around with my remote. I'll be in the grocery store, and sure enough, someone will see my remote, or they'll ask me something, and I'll say, hey, have you heard of Medtronics? <laughs> it's a great conversation starter. Nobody ever really believes me, and they always ask the same question. Can I touch it? Of course you can touch it. It's right here. <laughs> so, I mean, at first, I will say it was very startling to think, I'm going to have a foreign object living in my body till I die. I'm going to be dependent on a machine. But I realized on September 26, 2013, that I'm not dependent on anything except for me. The machine just helps. I'm customized. I have an added feature. It's kind of like uh, adding a moon rule for having DVD players put in your high performance vehicle. This is my little add on. You know, I paid a little extra for it, but I got it now and it makes me run great. So what's there to be upset about? Even if I shut this off, I know that I, as long as I don't shut this off or this off, I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be better okay, better than okay. I'm going to have a brighter future than I ever had in my 20s. My life seems so much better now because I know now what I didn't know then, that it takes strength, strength of mind, strength of body, strength of spirit to persevere in time. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about Medtronics. It's the company that, in partnered with Dr. Mammoth and his amazing staff, helped change my life. Medtronics Neurostimulator Spinal Cord Implant. That's what I have. And I have the one that is MRI compatible, which at first I thought, because they told me I needed a permit to carry it, that I was just gonna go around setting off alarms everywhere. There's metal in my back, there's metal in my body, I can't go through in, to shop without setting off the alarms, I can't ever go through airport security without setting off the alarms. It doesn't set off any alarms. How amazing is that? I've had a little bit of complications with it, but nothing that Rutgers couldn't handle. Dr. Mammis, as soon as I said that there was even an issue, come in, come in, let me fix it come and let me fix it, even after surgery, even after months of, of recovery, he still treats me like I'm his patient and I'm a priority. And that in turn makes me feel like there's nothing that's gonna happen that I can't go and get what I need, especially get my fix, as I like to refer to it. I gotta go see Dr. Mamis, I gotta get my fix. He gives me the, just the confidence that comes from having your doctor know that you're gonna take care of him. Um, or having you know that your doctor's gonna take care of you, I should say, that just makes you feel like, okay. It's kind of like a, like a parent teaching their child to walk all over uh, for the first time. And you can hold your kid. You hold your child and you let them take a few steps on their own. And then you back away and let them really take steps on their own. That's what Dr. Mam says to me. He gives me the support that I need to take the steps on my own so that I can really embrace my new life. Um, Medtronics has certainly been, I'd say, a very vast improvement in my social life. I find myself talking about my machine all the time because I love it. I tell people everywhere I go, especially when I meet someone who has uh, prosthesis, we actually compare stories. Oh yeah, hey, check out what I got. You know, check out my arm or check out my leg or check out this. And I'm like, oh yeah, check out my wireless remote control from my Medtronic's Neurostimulator Spinal Cord Implant. And we really actually start to build a, you know, it's almost like build camaraderie. One injured person who's recovered to another injured person who's recovered, sharing how we chose to recover. Now we could have stayed in the ruts that we were in or stayed with the life that we were in missing a part of us, but instead we chose to enhance a part of us so that we could enhance our lives. And that's what Medtronics means to me. They're the people that fought for me 100% they fought as strong as I fight every day of my life for me to have this machine. I had every obstacle come up against me. Every obstacle from having cancellations of surgeries two and three times to not being approved from the insurance company because of this, that reason, so on and so forth to me even backing out at the very last minute. My rep, Sheldon Hansen, fought for me. Did he ever tell you that? Did he tell you how difficult I was? <laughs> I 
know what was there. <laughs> How I would call him crying, hysterical crying all hours of the day and night because I couldn't stand living in pain. I couldn't stand the waiting to get my, my machine put in. I was scared. I was going through all these emotions because before you can actually heal your body, you have to heal your mind. And if you can't accept what you're going into and really realistically assure yourself or even just acknowledge within yourself that you're not going for perfection, you're going for improvement. If you think you're going to go into any situation and get perfection out of it, you're going to be sadly mistaken. You're going to be devastated when you don't get the perfection because there's no such thing as perfection in life. Improvement, on the other hand, is available to you. And that's what he did for me. He, he kept it honest with me. He kept it 100% real and would let me know, Sequoia, this is not going to give you everything back that you lost, but it's going to make it better. And that's what this says. This machine improves, as they like to say, your quality of life. 100% improve my quality of life. Um, I remember, I would say it was about six hours. The morning before, the morning that he told me, or the day he told me that I was gonna, I got approved and my surgery was scheduled for the next day, I called him first thing that morning and I said, you know what, I'm done. I'm not waiting anymore, I give up. I'm just gonna go back to Washington State and I'm just gonna live my life miserable and in pain, and if it's meant to be, it'll be. I'd say probably three hours, maybe went by, three to five hours went by, and he called me back and he said, you're approved, and your surgery's tomorrow. Your first patient come in at 5 a.m. And I said to him, but I already packed my bags. I called the airline, I was on my way out, I'm not even kidding. I packed my bags, I was really ready to, to give up on holding on to that hope, let it go, go on with my life, it's just being miserable. Where would I be then? Morbidly obese, defeated, addicted, hopeless, nowhere where I am right now. What kind of example would that be for my family? Or my son for that matter? He looks up to me. You know what he says is a superhero? Mommy. You know why he thinks I'm a superhero? Because I have a machine in my back. He thinks it's the coolest thing. My nieces and nephews think that I'm a, an Autobot. They think I'm a transformer. And I think that's brilliant that I can encourage the next generation of my own family to do better, to have better, to accept things. Even if it's different about you, accept it, work it. I tell them, work that thing. You got something that makes you stand out? Take it, run with it, be proud of it. Because the thing that makes you stand out in a room is going to be the same thing that's going to get everyone's attention. And then you can lead them. And that's what I, I'm glad I can do. I can lead. All because I didn't give up on myself. All because I had somebody in my corner fighting with the same strength, with the same common interests. They wanted me to have the best quality of life. They fought for me. Everyone that's been a part of, I can't even count how many people. I think maybe 60 people I counted from the minute I walked into the minute I left that day, 60 people I think I counted, all fought for me to be here today. And it's for those people, and for myself, and for all the people like me, that I would proudly say that there is 100% a chance of a higher quality of life, 100% of making your life better, 100% a chance of overcoming your chronic pain, if you're not willing to give up on your hope. And that's all she wrote.